starting recording. Okay, okay. Let us pray, please. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to meet again uh, before you from various parts of the world. We pray, Lord, that you be a teacher. Let us, oh Lord, open our our minds, open our ears and our eyes. Cause there, Lord, that we will see the Lord Jesus Christ as we check your words today. Bless us with yourself by your spirit. Lord, we know you created the universe and the earth is a very small for you. And therefore we know that you will be with everyone wherever we are on the face of the globe. We pray, O oh Lord, that you indeed be the teacher to each one of us in Jesus' name. We pray for our brethren that will be joining us, that Lord will be with them. And you will bless them too, to the glory and honor of your holy name. And we pray for people that we eventually watch and listen to this Bible study. We pray that you cause the Bible study to be a blessing to everyone to whom it will come, to the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let me share the screen. Okay. Okay, people are having trouble hearing me. I can hear you properly. That we will receive the grace to understand the word that you have uh, prepared for us today. And that your word will prosper in all. Can I, can, please, can everybody hear me? I can hear you. You have, mute, you have muted quick. everybody. You have muted everybody, so they may not be able to respond to your call. Okay. Yes, okay. To respond. Let, let me unmute everybody so that everybody can respond. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay. I can know most people. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, I, I have the belief that you are, everybody is hearing me now. If you are not hearing me, please let me know. If anyone is not hearing me, please let me know. And if there's anything I can do uh, from this end, so that you might, you might hear me clearly, uh, let me know. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. And uh, I, I hope. Okay. Okay. I believe everybody is seeing my screen. So we. We will try and continue and see how far we go on our study of uh, the book of Galatia. Uh, if we can finish wherever we get to, 
in the next one hour i will stop so that because i want us to uh if we have questions so that we, we bring up questions and we, we 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 check the bible together not only on the issues that we raised in the book of galatia but any other issue that we we think is are uh, important the book of galatians we have done so far we have done on the chapter and as you can see on your screen uh, this is the beginning of uh, of chapter four uh, sons and heirs of god and let me let me start straight away by by reading it now i say that they hear as long as as he is a, is a child differs nothing from a servant though he be lord of all but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father even so we when we were children were in bondage under the elements of the world Fast four. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent for his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent for the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Uh, almost like every other part that we have touched in the book of Galatians. Chapter 4 uh, is starting by with reference to our relationship to God brought about by Christ. It's starting with the issue of the law, what the law is where the law could take people or has taken people compare with the faith that comes from the promise of god so now i say that the hair as long as he's a child human beings are anybody who is seeking after god before the coming of Christ, they are, they are depicted as the hair, the hair that has to be taught, has to be tutored, has to be guided under the various laws. Uh, sometime last week, I know we mentioned the position of the laws. But the Bible said that the law was a schoolmaster in order to, to guide us. So the law of the weakness of the human flesh, nobody can be justified before God following the law. Nobody can follow each and every one of the laws <laughs> in a way that will please God. God made the laws available to us to act as our tutor, to act as our schoolmaster. What the law generally does is to, at the, at the, uh, is to show you how weak you are, is to show you the inadequacy, show you your inadequacy. That is what the law does. Uh, if, if, if somebody is really intent on pleasing God and the person does not have the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ the person is going to come to a frustrating dead end sooner than he thinks because he will discover 
just as you have in the book of Romans chapter 7, that Paul said he discovered, that even where his mind is made, is made up to, to serve God, there's another force in his mind, in his flesh, pushing him towards sin. And that is even somebody who actually has been quickened to seek for God. The people that have not been quickened to seek for God, uh, they generally put up pretenses. And just as we will see in this our today's uh, lecture, uh, the teaching, uh, the pretenses at the end of the day comes to a stage where uh, some of the most dangerous people around are people who actually are raised by pastors who are raised in the church but who have got no connection at all to the Lord Jesus Christ. Their hearts have not been changed. Uh, they know some of the rules. If you, if you try to talk to them about becoming Christian, they know the passages. They know the passages, but they do not, they do not know the owner of the passages. They do not know God. So they become, they become hardened, so to speak. They become, okay, they become hardened in the, in the attempt to, in the attempt to, to follow the law, uh, you, you, some of them become actually quite cynical. You, you now have uh, cynicism. You, you have a situation where uh, people, particularly children of pastors, bishops, and so on, uh, they are not introduced, they are not taught the true faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, they become some of the worst people to be to be introduced to Christ. Because they think that uh, whatever is being spoken in religion is a picture of their fake parents who themselves don't know God. So the law, in a way, Uh, for us to follow the law, to discover that when people become Christians, they are still the intrusion of the law, even for people who are Christians. Uh, they, their mind is woken up, and they think that uh, they are obeying all the laws is what will So the, the difference between the promise that God has given to us and the requirements of the law, they always weigh on us. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent for his son, made of a woman, made under the law. I highlighted the, 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 the first four. Genesis chapter 4, verse 4, made of a woman. And if you see, if we, if we check, uh, that, that's a very strange statement. I, we, we, that's one of the pillars of, of the faith of Christianity, made of a woman. Uh, as Christians, we have to note those gems, so to speak, the, the gold gems, that God put in each, very many portions of the Bible. You see them here, there, there, and so on. God sent for his son, made of a woman. 
as you could see in the, in the reference that you have there, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. That is what the Bible is referring to by saying God's son was made of a woman. And as you could see on your screen, that's what I try to highlight about the seed of the woman. I put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Strictly speaking, biologically speaking, women don't have seed. Women don't have seed. It's only men that have seed. But the Bible, right from Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, even during the fall of man, because God is God and he has always been God, you, you, you thought that he would be so angry at that moment that if, if we think God is like man, uh, he will say things that will be out of his anger. No. Even in, even in his anger, God was giving even prophecies of what he was going to do, how he was going to save man. And the seed of the woman, uh, Christ, Christ was the only person, the only human being, who this particular part of the Bible could be true of, made of a woman. Every other one of us were basically made of our father and our mother together. But that, was, that is not something you can say about the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that is part of what is in the Bible. Christ was going to come, the, the, the Savior was going to come through the woman. A, a, a particular woman will have seed. Them that is simply repeating the promise that God has given of what God was going to do in the redemption of man. And because he has sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Verse 6, because we are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. God's spirit dwells in the heart of every child of God. And the spirit of God is the, is the person that draws us closest, closer and closer to God. In our temptations, in our walk, in our struggles, God's spirit comes to give us hope to draw us closer to God. We see God as our Father. We, 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 yearn, we yearn to move closer to God every day. The fear that human beings normally have of God, that is the dread, the dread about meeting God. When people are forgiven of their sins, the dread vanishes. We fear God so that we will not offend him. That is the fear of the son. We do not have the fear of the rebel again. We have the, the fear that draws us nearer and nearer and nearer to God. And therefore, we can call him father. We can call him daddy. Abba, Abba, in, uh, Abba in Hebrew is, uh, is, uh, is something like daddy. It's, uh, Abba, Abba in Hebrew is uh, something like, uh, is the affectionate name that, uh, that uh, sons give their father. 
because we are no longer enemies of God. The Lord Jesus Christ has made us to become heirs, become heirs with him of God. We, be, we become heirs of God. And we, we do not want to offend him. We do not want to do things that we can see that we know. He says we must not do. The next one. We are heirs of God, yes, as you can see. Uh, uh, wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if we are no more servants, well, the Christ said that uh, he's no longer calling us servants because servants don't know what their masters are up to. But he was telling us everything that we need to know. We are no more. We are no more uh, servants. We are. We are sons. We are sons. The Lord God regards us as as His son. The Lord Jesus Christ made us sons. Made us sons of God. Christ has made us sons of God, and we are heirs of God. And. Uh, it's important. I want to say something that in in Bible, in Bible theology, the best that any created being can be is to actually to be in right relationship with God. If, if we read our Bible, that is the main object of, of the Bible. The objective of uh, of the Bible is that men uh, will, will, will be in a situa in situation of of sonship with God. Uh, the, the Bible says that God's sons are not short that they cannot save. He says are not heavy. God is everywhere. The omnipresence of God is part of the attributes of God. The fact that God is everywhere, every time and at all times. And in all, and, and in all places. So, he's not short of ability to raise help if help is needed. He's not short of ability to, to take care if care is needed. And the Bible says that his eyes go to and fro throughout the earth to, to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect towards him. So the Lord Jesus Christ made our hearts to be perfect. We, be, we become here of God. We become heirs of God. And that is a position that is more than any other thing that the world can give. That that is a that is a position that those who those who don't know God, uh, people who don't know God, they think that money can can substitute for God. No, the Bible doesn't teach any such thing. And for those who know God, they know that no, it's not money. Money cannot. Money cannot. In, in fact, uh, I think the writer of the Bible says that. God's love is even better than life. God's faithfulness is better than life. God shining his face on us is even better than life itself. It's better than health. It's better than money. Uh, of course, in this time of, uh, of uh, in this age, uh, that's something that you don't, you don't hear again. Uh, you hear people now equating godliness with money. Some people even say that they cannot uh, they cannot witness for Christ if they don't have money. They 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 use their material possession. That the, the material possession is the basis of their witness for Christ. That without uh, being rich, you cannot witness. I, I was reading one of these uh, 
our very big pastors. I was reading his uh, sermon uh, some few weeks ago, and that was what he was saying that he, he used his uh, PhD, he used his, uh, his house, he used uh, whenever they come to dedicate his house, that is, where, that is what he used, he used to, pit, to witness to his people. It is when he buy cars. No. God's faithfulness is better than life. Uh, first aid, how be it? Then, when ye knew not God, ye did serve you unto them, which by nature are no gods. Th that is uh, self-explanatory by itself. When ye knew not God, ye did serve you unto them, which by nature are no gods. Uh, what I wrote on top of that is that unbelievers cannot worship God. They cannot do service to God. No human being can do service to God if he does not know God. That is the, that is the conclusion of the Bible. I'll be it then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them, which by nature are no gods. Uh, that may be hard for us to believe, but that is the Bible. That is the Bible. Uh, if if uh, uh, we see pictures of people uh, in Hajj, for example, uh, uh, moving around around Mecca, uh, a statue or something like that, a stone, and they said they are there to worship God. No, the Bible disagrees with that. That they are doing service unto them, which by nature are no gods. As Christians, we have to get that one very clearly. The only people who can worship God are those who know him. The Bible says that God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God cannot be worshipped in error. That is the implication of that statement. It cannot be worshipped. God cannot be worshipped in error. If you are in error and you think God can be worshipped, no, you are, you, are, you are not being truthful. It's only people who know him that they can worship him, worship him in, in spirit and in truth. That's the only one that can worship God in spirit and in truth. Uh, I, I took this picture when I went out in Abuja last week. I, I took the picture that you are going to see now. And we, we just let, let's wait a little for the, for the screen to come up. The picture of, uh, that's, uh, that's a marketing, uh, okay. Let me see if I can make it quite big. It's a marketing, uh, okay. I, I hope you can all see it now. You see, uh, they say worship. Uh, it's a big, uh, it's a big board. It's a big sign board that they put in various places in Abuja. And you see the, you see the picture of uh, Dr. Adeboye on it, worship. It's a very sad thing because uh, when I when I when I saw it, I stopped the car and I I took the picture. Who are they worshiping? Who can they worship? Can somebody who does not know God can the person worship God? No. The Bible says that when you knew not God, you did service unto them, which by nature are no gods. There's another passage of the Bible where we are told that the gods that unbelievers worship are demons, they are idols. And we have to be very, very uh, care, uh, careful about that. Even though it might be, uh, it might be hard for us to take it, if people gather together and somebody has the capacity to tell them 
to, for example, look at the road and pray. Focus on the road and pray, for example. Any place where people gather together and they do error in their worship, they are actually in worship of demons. They are not worshipping the God of the universe. So it's not possible. But now, after that, you have known God, or rather, or rather, are known of God. How turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements? Where unto you decide again to be in bondage? That was the problem of uh, of the people of Galatia. Uh, some of us get into that same problem too. And nowadays, we have to be we have to be we have to allow our eyes to be open. That people come around and tell us that we have to observe days and months and festivals and and sacraments and this and that. That they are not putting us back into bondage. If we are able to get there, part of the main teaching of Paul in the book of Galatia is about the liberty that the faith in Christ has brought Christians. God is no longer, let me tell you something, God is no longer angry at you. Please get that one very clear. I want us to underline that. Once you become a follower of Christ, the anger of God on sinners, on human beings, evaporates as far as you are, as far as you are concerned. Please, I want us to note that. God is no longer angry at you. If for, if for example, tomorrow, you discover that you do not have ten dollars in your account. Let me tell you that it's not because God is angry at you. If tomorrow your car breaks down anywhere you are traveling to, please get it assured in your heart that God is no longer angry at you. No. God God's, God's anger at you has been satisfied by Christ. People, therefore, asking you to observe days, to observe months, uh, Sundays, uh, Saturdays, uh, Easter, Christmas, whatever festival. No, it does not apply to Christians. Yeah, we, 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 don't, wait, we don't wait till Easter before we remember Christ. We remember Christ every day. We remember his sovereign on the cross every day. We don't wait until December before we remember the birth of the Lord. We remember his birth every day. That, that, this is not a teaching that we should not gather together. Please, I want you to get it very clear. If we, if we have the opportunity, we must gather together and worship. That's what the Bible says we should. Somebody should contribute Psalms, Sermon, Revelation from God, Observation of what God is teaching his people, yes. But if we are in a position where we cannot do that, we must let it settle in our hearts that by, because of Christ, God is happy with us. And we can therefore pray. We can pray, give us this day our daily bread with the heart of a son to his father. We can do that while our hearts cry Abba, Father to God. Whom Christ said is the only good person. So, with, that's what we said to Our Father is the only good being in the whole of the universe. He's not angry with us. He's, not, he's no longer angry with us. His anger has been satisfied by us hiding in Christ. So, uh, for, for let, let, let's see verse 11. Paul was talking of Galatians, that he was afraid of them. He, I'm afraid of you. Let's have bestowed upon you labor in vain. He was afraid. He wasn't sure again. He wasn't sure about whether these people actually believe the gospel or not. Because they had reverted back to the 
observance of days, of new moons, of times, of festivals, which never helped anybody. They have referred back to the weak and the beggarly elements, as he put it. Uh, in fact, uh, Galatians chapter 4, verse 13 uh, is an interesting part of the Bible. Because, uh, as you can see on your screen, uh, Paul was reminding them, you know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. I, I isolated that passage with the headings that you, with the heading that you see there. You know how, how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. Uh, when Paul was preaching to the people of Galatia, he was, he was visibly sick. Please, infirmity and the word infirmary, uh, for those of us who are a little old, uh, you know the, the old name for hospitals uh, was infirmary. That's, that's, the, that's the old name. Some 50, 60, 70 years ago, uh, they call hospitals. And maybe in some part of uh, Britain, they still call hospitals by that name. What is very clear in chapter, in Galatians chapter 4, verse 13, was that Paul was sick. Paul was sick when he was preaching to them. And the people of Galatians could see his sickness. They could see he was not, he was not feeling okay when he was preaching to them. But the Bible didn't give us much about the nature of the sickness. Of Paul was sick. I, I put uh, the cases of Trophimus uh, as you can see in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 20, and that of, and that of uh, Ephra, uh, Epaphroditus in Philippians chapter 2, verse 26. I put them in the same, on that page, uh, in order to highlight something. The Christian faith is not occultism. It's not occultism. Uh, is in the last 60, 70 years, maybe 100, people came into Christianity teaching that Christians cannot be sick. The thing came gently. It, it was little by little. It started eating up into, Christian, uh, into the body of Christianity that Christians cannot be sick. Paul reminded the people of Galatia that they knew, they saw he was indeed sick when he was with them. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 20, Paul writing that Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Milotum sick. Trophimus was even abandoned, so to speak. He was so sick he could not go along with them as they went to preach the gospel, as they continued to preach the gospel. The case of Epaphroditus was basically the same. So, the idea that Christians cannot be sick is not taught in the Bible. It's not taught in the, in the Christian Bible. Christianity is different from the old cult. It's different from the occult. If because people have lived glorified life, a life that glorifies God in their sicknesses. People who teach that Christians cannot be sick is an idea they borrowed from Hinduism, from the so-called holy men of the Hindu religion. It's not from Christianity. If God wants to be glorified in anybody's sickness, 
in any way. That is his own prerogative. And we, are, we as Christians, we have to note our Bible. We have to know our Bible. This is part of the Bible that uh, uh, once Christians know that Paul was sick, people coming to them to say that they can never be sick, they know that they are liars. They know that they are deceivers. Because in actual fact, the people saying those things themselves, they fall sick. Their children fall sick. Their spouses fall sick. They themselves, they fall sick. Uh, in the 80s, uh, when the teachings of uh, Kenneth Hagin came to Nigeria, one of the things that uh, the man used to bamboozle us with was that for 50 years, he never had anything to do with sickness, that he never had a headache for 50 years. When in Christian circles, things like that were said, people opened their mouth, ah, what kind of... I mean, me too, I want to, I want to attain the, 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 the holiness, the greatness. It was later that we realized that, we realized that, can I, can I, that it was all lies. That uh, Mr. Higgin was basically uh, lying through his teeth. That he was he was sick. He was coming in and out of uh, of surgeons' uh, tables. Body to lie on his behalf that it, it, that when you lie on my behalf, when you lie for me this is when people would say, oh, no there's no such thing in, in Christianity um, let me see if I can move a little forward uh, where, is, where is then the blessedness ye speak of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, you would have plugged out your, your own eyes. I have given them to me. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? When people turn from the true gospel, uh, they have, they, they, they have what, what I call a callosed. Hearts. They, they have hard hearts. They become hardened uh, uh, in turn away from the from the truth, from the true gospel. They become something else. The simplicity of the gospel is is the truth about God, and that is where we should stay. Uh, somewhere, I think, in the book of First uh, Corinthians, chapter four, verse six, the Bible says that we should not go beyond what is written. Don't go beyond what is written. What is clearly written. Don't don't say God says something when God I didn't say any such thing. Uh, verse seventeen: They seriously affect you, but not well. Yea, they will exclude you that He might affect them. But it is good to be seriously affected, always in a good thing, and not only when I'm present with you. These distract, detractors seriously. They are very serious. Uh, as, uh, as, Paul, as Paul himself wrote in Romans chapter 10, uh, the Jews. At times, uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, they put some of us to shame. About their seal. Mm -hmm. At times, you listen to you you watch the followers of false religion, the uh, the followers of Islam. Uh, you they put you to shame with their seal, 
And the, the issue, the issue was is the question that you see in red in, in before you. Can anybody change God's mind by mere seal? If you are sealers, let's say you are sealers in serving God, but you are doing it in a wrong way. Will God be bent? Can God's mind be bent towards you? The answer is no. There is no such thing. Because as you can see in Romans chapter 10, verse 1 to 3, let me see if I can get it. For this uh, benefit of some of our people that we that we get this material, let me open to Romans chapter 10. Uh, as you can see on your screen, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a seal of God, but not according to knowledge. The Jews, the people of Israel, they have a seal for God, but not according to knowledge. That's another thing that I used to tell people, the Jews have nothing to teach us. The Jews have nothing to, tell, to teach Christians. No. No. We, 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 we do not gloat over the Jews. No, we don't gloat over any other human being. We are to pray for God to have mercy on them. That's what the Bible says we should do. But we are not to fall for the tricks of the devil. That you hear today on TBN and other, uh, other church uh, programs on the TV, that there are some special things that the Jews have that you don't have. The Bible never teaches any such thing. We are the only ones that have things that the, that the Jews need, and that is Christ. The Jews, they have seal. But they are ignorant about God. If you have seal, and in Nigeria and maybe other parts of the world, the other people that I, when I was growing up, that I, I witnessed such seal with are the Aladura people. When I was growing up in Lagos, uh, I uh, I used to I used to visit them. I used to go to the Bar Beach in those days to go and witness to them. And I wonder, these people they they they, they face the elements. They sleep in the cold uh, around the Bar Beach in order to meet God. Supposedly, they, they, they tell you that they, are, that they are after God. Of course, what they would never entertain was you opening Bible with them. I, I learned that from the Aladuras years ago. That you don't open Bible. You don't, you don't ask Aladura people to, please, let us read the Bible. And uh, the people who are following them in the uh, Word of Faith today, in Pentecostal churches, they are simply following the pattern of the Aladras. I know many of you, when you read my, when you watch my video, you hear me mentioning Aladra, Aladra. Yeah, it was because as a young person, I had, I had the opportunity to interact with the Aladra people. I, I knew what, I, I had an idea of what they, what they taught in those days. And to a large extent, that is what the state continue to teach to today. They, 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 they teach about the need for dry fasting, for example. If you go to, if you go to the Aladura and you have uh, any issue to pray about, uh, you want God to do something for you, they tell you, you go and do 21 day dry fasting. And they tell you the dry fasting means that you will, ne you will not eat or drink. They tell you, you, you go and stand in a particular place, maybe in the sun, for hours, in a very hot place, or in a very cold place, or whatever. They tell you that you must, uh, you must never be found asleep between 11, 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. You, you, must, you must be on your knees, praying. But when you ask them about the Lord Jesus Christ, no, you, know that you discover that they, they have no regard at all for the person of Christ, no regard at all. The, the intention 
and their theology was that the amount of sovereign that they allowed to themselves will, the, will be the basis of God answering their prayer. And they are committed. They are committed to those beliefs. No. You see, the thing that the Bible teaches is that human beings, we cannot dictate to God how he must be approached. Everything about our approach to God on our own, by our own means, by our own teaching, is abomination before him. Everything. Everything, every way that we, we say we want to approach God is abomination before him. If we, are, if we are not hidden under Christ, if we are not coming to God by Christ. So seal without knowledge is, was one of the problems of the people of Galatia. And it's something that we have to make sure uh, we do not allow. Of course, as I said earlier, uh, it got to a stage where Paul was saying, I stand in doubt of you. I do not know, I do not know whether you people, whether you are really Christians. I'm not sure again. I'm not sure again, because since you could be easily deceived, and that, this, this is an important thing that I want us to look at before we move away. And that is what you have in red before you. Christians should know when they are being lured into false teachings. Since Christ, in, in uh, John chapter 10, verse 4, said, My sheep know my voice. My sheep, they know my voice. If we, do, if we discover that anybody can just come and say things, and we cannot even, we don't even know whether what the person is saying is error or not, and we cannot pray to God, and we, we are just falling for it. Every moment we just fall for errors. We have to be very careful. We should hear the voice of our God. A true sheep must know the voice of his master. My sheep, they know my voice. And the other thing I want to say is that uh, it is it, you, th those of us who are listening to this, it is not my voice that drew you. Please get that clearly. It's not my video that drew you. It's not my writings that drew you. It's the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the, it's the one. Maybe, maybe a Christian helps you to pinch you and say, look, why don't, why don't you check the Bible or this or that? But that's all we can do as Christians. Our heart must know the voice of our Lord. And uh, it's something that me too, I continue to pray. And I advise every one of us to continue to pray. That each day God will, God will make his voice to be clearer to us as we read The Bible. That is the prayer that the Bible says we should pray. We should all continue to pray every day for ourselves. Daily, more and more, we know the voice of God. We know the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that nobody will say he's stand, he standing in doubt of, of us. There are some elementary things that as Christians, we generally we generally know we generally know when people bring distortions about the about the nature and character of God about the nature and character of the Lord Jesus Christ even about the nature and character of Satan we should quickly pick it up that no those are not words from God uh, let me see how far we can go because there are quite a few. Fast 21 to fast 25, I will not read it much, is Paul's, the Apostle's argument between the law and the faith. Please, let's read it. Let's read this, uh, this place. We, uh, we, will, we, we need them. Paul is giving allegories of the, the law versus the faith. 
that is not, I'm not saying they are not important. I just feel that we should not dwell so much on them. Uh, of course, you see what I have or in red as the topic of this particular part before you. Uh, uh, I'm quoting uh, verse 26 and verse 27. Uh, but Jerusalem, which is above, is above, is which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travelest not. For the desolate had many more children than she which had an husband. And uh, you see, Isaiah 53, verse, uh, verse 11 to verse 12, where the Bible said that Christ, we have many children. In Asa chapter 53, most of us are familiar with Asa chapter 53. Uh, some people call it the gospel before the gospel, really. About Christ paying for the sins of human beings. As I chapter, chapter 53 is an interesting passage. Uh, because uh, you see the, the teaching about uh, atonement uh, predates Isaiah chapter 53. God has been talking about atonement right from the book of Genesis. In fact, right from around Genesis chapter 3, you've been seeing atonement. You've been seeing blood being shed for the sin of man. But generally speaking, the blood that we are being shed. We are the blood of animals. They were the blood of animals. Isaiah chapter 3 is very bold in saying that this time around, it will be the blood of a man. That a person in human form was going to have his blood shed. He was going to shed his blood for atonement for other human beings. That's a very radical theology. It's very, very radical. And it's, uh, it's plain. I won't say it. It's not the first part of the Bible where you see it. But it's very plain. The other thing that is plain in the book of Isaiah chapter, chapter 53 is resurrection. The person was going to die. In shedding his blood, he would die. But the Bible now says that the person was going to have many sons. And he will see, he will see. Let me see if I can, uh, if I can locate Isaiah chapter 53. It's been one of the most interesting part of the, of the Old Testament to me. Uh, that the person will see. Let me see. I'll. I'll the person will see the fruit of his travail. The person who was going to die, because he was going to die. He, 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 okay, I, I mean, I mean, I, I, I think it's at the later part. You see that the Bible said that the person was going to go to the grave, and then he will see the fruit of his travail. Let, let me see if I can mute. The let me see if I can mute the, that particular person's uh, radio. Okay. 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 So, uh, let, let's see. Yet it pleased the Lord. I'm reading Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. I put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. So his soul was going to be made an offering for sin. He was going to die. The next thing you see is a resurrection. Somebody whose soul has, has been made an offering for, for sin. The Bible says he shall see his seed. So he will rise. After his soul had been made an offering for sin, he will rise. 
He will prolong his days. The pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. And look at verse 11. Verse 11, verse 12. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many. So, just as we are reading in, um, in Galatia chapter 4, verse 26 and verse 27, the barren that beareth not will break forth. Those, the one that travelled not in, in birth, it will be the mother, the father this time around, of many. Um, let me see, maybe 12, let's see. Yeah, it's likely, yeah, let me see, first, uh, first five, uh, chapter five, chapter five, I think, okay, no, okay, fine. Okay. So then, brethren, we are not children of, of the of the bondwoman, but of the free. As I said when I was starting, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We are the children of God. We are, we are not the children of the bondwoman. We are not we are not bound to follow law because Christ. Has made us, Christ has made us free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That is uh, the end of. Uh, I'll do. I'll do one or two more. Then I'll stop. Uh, from verse one of chapter five, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That was Paul advising the people of Galatia. Stay in the, stay in the freedom, in the liberty that Christ has given us. Do not go about getting yourself bounded into laws. In their own time, into various uh, food laws. Laws of uh, circumcision. Laws of dressing. No. The liberty that Christ has procured for us should be enough. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that was then, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. If, we, if anybody wants to follow the law, you have to follow everything there. There is a difference between being justified by law and being justified by faith in Christ. If you, if you must live by law, then you cannot even offend in one. Because any offense in one results into perdition. That does not mean that we commit sin as Christians. We don't, we don't, we don't live in sin. Christ becomes our justification, becomes our sanctification, becomes our sin bearer, becomes our holiness. He becomes our hope. Uh, this is the little I will say before I go away. I'll stop in, uh, in this particular point. In level 11, you did wrong well. Who, who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion comes not of him that caused you. A little living. Living the whole long. Some, somebody gave this equation that you see at the foot of this particular page. And it's basically the equation of the Bible. We cannot afford to put a little lie, even if it is one percent you can't afford to follow a little lie anything that is not directly traceable to the revelation of christ from the bible we cannot import it and 
think that we can follow it in any way. And we have to be very careful that we do not allow ourselves to be swayed left or right in our minds. People come in to say, you have to do this. You have to do that. Before God can be happy with you. And all they say, basically, they have very little to say about the Lord Jesus Christ. What you must do, what you must not do. Uh, at kind of dressing you should put on, what kind of dressing you should not put on. And by that, they are not even talking of uh, simply women covering their... And hello, they tell you, uh, your turban has to be of social dimension. At the, the same time that uh, Boko Haram uh, complains about, the same, time, the, the same time that ISIS people complains about, they say that, yeah, you, you must wear those kind of turban, too. And uh, there must be no ring in your finger. Uh, at times, uh, they tell you that uh, any, any, any iron on your body is a sin. Your dress must be of a particular quality. If it's beyond that quality, then it becomes sin, all those kind of things. We've got to be very careful that we do not allow anything to block the glory of Christ from us. I'll be stopping here, and I, as I said, we should raise questions. If we have questions from this particular passage or from other areas, that maybe in the next 30, 40 minutes before we close, uh, brethren can look at those questions and uh, and I believe God will give us insight how we should go. Thank you, everybody. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Yeah, yeah thank you so much it, for this, um, this yeah. um, teaching. Uh, and um, uh, especially the area where you said um, uh, people worship what do they do not know. That is just the truth. Go to church, people pray, fast. Um, uh, even before I got to join the assembly of um, true worshippers, it was like a rule and regulation that I have to wake up early in the morning, every morning, and pray for hours, and pray in tongues for hours, in what I'm praying for, and not actually remembering what the scripture, or not knowing what is, that the scripture even says, that we do not know what we should pray for, or what we will pray for. We are not even aware of it, because we don't know. And not still knowing, or not still... Um, having the, um, the the knowledge of um, the true worshippers that the Father wants us to worship Him in truth and in spirit, and um, mm. know that uh, our Lord told us that if the Word speaks to us is life and in spirit and in spirit, and we, we also know that He is the truth, so we are to worship in Him, Christ Himself, which is the Word, which is the Spirit. When we, when we, it's joining the assembly of truth, um, just joining the assemblies of, um, in, that knows the truth, I come to learn that it is the word. We worship in the word. We worship according to the word. We worship according yeah. to what, what we know about Christ. That is, that is our true yeah. worship. We do not worship anymore. But, um, let me take John 4, John 4, um, 23. And I read, but the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking mm. such people to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So if, if, if you're not worshipping in the word, I wonder, 
I wonder what you're worshipping. All I hear around me since being in the country is die by fire, key by fire. No accident will do this to me. No poverty will do this to me. Miracle this and miracle that. And I'm like, what is all this? I do not even hear um, the Bible being read. I do not even hear Christ. You say you are praying in the name of Jesus. And who you are praying in the name or who you say you suppose you're praying to, you do not say anything, you do not reference him. And it's, it's really, it really marvels me, and I thank God for his grace. So when, when I do my devotions like this, it's when I will study, I know what to pray for. When I study, I, I, I see the, the beauty in it, and I, and I worship him, and I praise him, and I glorify him. And, and when I study, I see my shortcoming. I see, I see my lowliness. I see not low as in my, I see my dirtiness, my worthlessness. I see how nothing and how you, let me, sorry to use that word, but I see how useless I am. Like I am not worth it at all. I deserve nothing. I deserve no mercy. I deserve no grace. In fact, I deserve the deepest part of hell itself. It is in the worship, in the in his word that you are able to get these realizations and then you are able to come, Lord, have mercy. Mercy. So it's in, 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 in his word, we know what to pray for and how to pray for because truly we do not know. Before I came to, before God drew me to himself, I don't remember praying and I wake up healthy. I run around, I eat well and everything is fine and I'm not praying. So if, if the if the Gentiles out there do not pray, do not worship and are fine, is it you that you are a child of God, that not even your strand of your air will be touched without the permission of your Father in heaven? What is our problem? And we call ourselves Christians. And I thank God for, for assemblies like this that teach us the truth, that tutor us in his word and the right way to go. Um, that being said, I have a question on the, um, where is it again, Corinthians, um, let me look for, um, hey, where did, I, where did I put that thing, where is it, I have a question, um, where Paul said, um, uh, I'll, I'll pray in my, with my lips and I'll pray with my spirit, so please help me with that, First Corinthians, I don't know if you can help me. Oh, 14. I think it's 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. Yes, thank you. Yes, I have a question on that. Um, yeah. Yes, I have a question on um, uh, First Corinthians verse four, uh, chapter 14. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it yeah. might when um, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, verse 15. Oh. Verse 15. So when when Paul says, um, what am I to do? I will pray with my spirit and I will pray with my mind also. I will sing with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. I really want to have um, a, a clear understanding of, um, I will pray with my spirit, you know. I worship in, in the spirit, as in, in the word of God, that I get the, but that I get the understanding. I worship with my mind, my own mind, that's my own understanding of the word. I do not know if that's the right interpretation. And even my, with my spirit, that my spirit is um, confusing me there. So I would really like um, if my elders can actually help me. Right. This, uh, okay. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. For the- thank you very well. Thank you. Yeah, so she's waiting. There's, uh, we are waiting for answers. You know, um, um, you know good evening. Yeah, I remember. Good evening. Yeah, yeah. Good evening, sister Jennifer. Yeah. Um, in the context of this was the correction that Paul was trying to to establish in the church in, uh, at Corinth. You know, this church is one of the most worldliest church, if I can use that language, you know. The church that were taking themselves to court, um, one of them was having affairs, 
with his father's wife. Uh, they were eating things onto the onto the idols, and uh, a number of things was happening in that church. They were even questioning Paul apostleship, and all this we see from chapter one up to up to chapter um, chapter ten and chapter eleven or thereabouts. So in chapter twelve, they now dive into the issue of tongue. Maybe somebody wrote him about some people speaking in gibberish, not tongues, because tongues are for signs. And uh, and the most intelligible languages. So um, they now began to do the correction in chapter twelve. In chapter thirteen, he talked about love. In chapter fourteen, he now talk about, he now was not comparing tongues to um, tongues and prophecy. And um, it, within that same context, he now came up with this issue that listen because the idea was some people are saying that oh, okay okay they are not praying in that tongue as Paul was talking about. They are praying in some angelic languages. That is, they are communicating with God, or sorry, with God. And um, because if you see the um, chapter one, he, um, uh, um, said, uh, verse one, and so he was talking about issue of pursuing love and things like that. So now the question is, what did he now mean by praying in in, in the spirit? And um, well, he said, I will pray with my spirit. Uh, let's let's cite it the way it is. Uh, what? Uh, what uh, what am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. Your mind is in, is in, is in the is in the, is the understanding of the word. In fact, you made mention of it. You said uh, earlier on when you are doing your postulation, you said um, we don't know what to pray for, but the spirit does what intercedes for us. Now, in your worship, when you worship and when you worship in spirit. It's, uh, it uh, you know it only brings out the fact that you are worshiping according to the written word. Good. There's no spirit in the abstract that is in the heavenly that is somewhere hanging there. When you pray in the spirit, you are praying according to the word of God, according to the will of God. Then when you do that praying, you don't do it in the gibberish that these people are talking about. It must be with your mind. You must understand that thing which you are praying, and that in understanding, which is in your knowledge. That is where the spirit is. That is, you pray in, in line with what is intelligible. You don't speak funny, lang um, funny gibberish or baby language, and you are not affirming that you are praying in angelic language. There's nothing like that. You're praying in the spirit, which is in, in line with the world, which is in the will of God, must be done with understanding, with your mind. And I think it's very simple. When you pray, if you start to pray in spirit, you must pray not in gibberish, you must pray in intelligible language, and your mind must have understanding. So, and that's why you say that even though I speak 10, um, I speak more than you all, but when I'm in the church, I will speak that language that everyone can understand. And when Paul talked about speaking in languages more than you, in tongues more than you, he didn't mean gibberish. He was talking about speaking different languages. As a matter of fact, he understand Greek, he understand Hebrew, he understand, um, Aramaic and a number of other languages that they're using at that time. So it's about prayer. You know, this text is more to do with praying in spirit and having understanding, singing in spirit. You speak, you sing psalms in hymns that are within the will, confirmation of the will of God, and also with your mind. You see, that there is a particular song which I a few, few months ago posted. It was, song, it, it was, it was sung by one of these. Um, I think there are two brothers also in this in this in the eighties in Nigeria. Um, that is the Holy Ghost came from heaven. Then uh, sorry, so Holy Ghost is seated on the throne and Christ has come to the earth. So, but real and true, the scriptures talk about Christ seated in heaven and the Holy Ghost is with us. But this song move it the other way around. I said the Holy Ghost is seated on the throne. Uh, I said the Holy Ghost seated on the throne and Christ has come to us in the earth. You are not singing in the spirit because it, because it doesn't align with the spirit of God, which is the word of Christ. So when you sing in the spirit, you must sing with your mind also. That mind, that, that mind understanding more is key. And also when you pray in the spirit, the mind also must align with it. I, you, must, you, must, you, uh, you must pray in a line that must be in line with it or in tune with the scriptures. And I think that is it. Thank you.
Uh, in case, uh, do we have any other addition? No, I just wanted the uh, the brother now to so at least uh, be able to explain to her uh, because what what uh, most people think that we are praying in spirit is uh, gotten from uh, Acts chapter two when those people when the spirit came on them and they started speaking in languages, he has said it very well that it is uh uh languages of order if you read that acts chapter 2 properly you will see that those people had the reason why they were uh they they had the language in their native language what does that really mean that means that they uh the jews that were scattered all over that came to jerusalem who are living in libya living in all those places for example People, you know, some of our people now who live in, um, in Germany, uh, the German language will be native to them. So those people had the disciples praising God in their native language. See, that is the thing that the most people call, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the general definition or the general definition of tongue is a language that is spoken in a place. So what our brother has just explained is that the spirit of God that is in you move you to pray in such a way to align with the will of God. However, if you want to pray, you may think, okay, I'm going to pray for elder. That's uh, you, you already predetermined those things, but when you start your prayer, there are things that the Spirit will minister to you which you have to pray. So, uh, generally, uh, I think, uh, you know, I may not be able to put it properly like our brother just said it. The, the, you need to distinguish between the what the people in the Word of Faith churches call speaking in tongues, praying in tongues, or praying in the Spirit, because they mixed it up totally totally and uh they, 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 they like he said they think that they were communicating with some angelic being and things and things like that and that is what so when you see all these big preachers uh saying something kakakak or something you know think they, they 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 interpreted it as being as praying in the spirit unfortunately he has said it in the right perspective, it's gibberish, nonsense, things that is unintelligible, it has no value. They just do that to mesmerize uh, believers that they are doing something that is, in fact, most of them actually, uh, they ask you, are you a born again with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Yeah. When you hear that, you just know that that is deceptions, in fact, that is a, a, a red flag for deception. A red flag for deception. I mean, where we had born again is in uh, John uh, chapter 3. We, uh, we didn't see Jesus telling us about uh, speaking in tongues. So, in understanding, my dear sisters, those like our brother has spoken to you, uh, I want to pray for, uh, let's say, I want to pray. Uh, you see something, the Spirit of God move you, or you you want to pray your regular prayer, you have some things that you want to pray about. And while you are praying, something nice, God is touching you to pray in such a way. In fact, He is the one that will give you the speech. He is the one that the Spirit will be one, the one that will lead you. You even pray, and sometimes you say, hang on, did I just pray this way? Because it is not you, just like our brother explained. It is the Spirit of God that is in you, that is leading you. And that's why the Bible mm -hmm. says that those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children Very of God. Very true. So, Very true, sir. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you everybody. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Um, let, me, let me chip in a little information uh, that the Lord used uh, in the uh, in the early 80s, uh, 
in the around 1977 or so, uh, I became a Christian in the uh, December, the last uh, week of December of 1976. Uh, uh, that I became born again. So please, you don't, you don't get the impression that I, I was uh, it was idol worshiper. People <laughs> were going to church. <laughs> yes, <laughs> at least uh, a Google festival. We we follow them. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, in 1977, I bought my first Bible. Uh, in those days, you didn't have many Bible fashions. So very often when you when people bought a new Bible and in, in the English language, more often than not, it was likely to be King, King James Bible. Um, what I'm going to tell you, uh, help, the Lord used it to help me a lot. Around 1983, Grace got to Nigeria about tongues. The Bible I bought in 1977, the preface to it, because it was King James Bible, it was King James Fashion Bible. The preface, we all know what is what a preface is, I suppose, isn't it? Uh, the, the, what the authors write in you to a particular book. The preface to it was uh, was the Bible English tongue. They, they, of course, you know the the way the English, you know the way the way they uh, by the by the order of the most major King James the whatever and so on, uh, who gave us uh, uh, his uh, his glory, his word to write the Bible tongue. Okay, I read that. Seven uh, from the pre preface. When the word of faith people, tongue speaking people, when they came around around 1982 and they started talking about tongues, uh, for the first few months, whenever they spoke about tongues around me, I would laugh and laugh and laugh. The, what I'm telling you now is the English tongue. You are hearing the me. If I change my my face and I put on my, you hear the your tongue again. And that, that that actually was the meaning of the word tongue in the Bible. That's what I want you to know. Please, comes around and says that tongue has any other meaning apart from ordinary languages. They are not quoting the Bible. I will I want us to know that one. As, as Jophia, as what I've just said, is, is, is very important too. There is nowhere in the Bible where you have tongue from, you can do a search after we finish this study. Nowhere in the Bible where you have tongue that refers to anything other than intelligible of ideas. Tongues are intelligible communication of ideas in particular languages. That's what they are. I, I just want to chip in that that uh, it, it was difficult before the various new Bibles came around. When you get the face of the Bible and the and they wrote it there for you, the the, the 1611 fashion of the Bible. The 1830 fashion of the Bible. This is the Bible in the English tongue. So, which means that uh, anytime I pray in English, I'm actually speaking in tongue. I think that, that's what I want to. That's what I want to chip in. Question or any other contribution, please. Can I? Yeah, yeah uh, you can. <laughs> Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I just want like, to say. Um, okay, good. I just want to uh, support uh, Elder. Even our first uh, national anthem said, though tribe and okay. tongue may differ. If you remember that <laughs> national anthem. So yeah, tongue, I do. Tongue is language. <laughs> I do. 
In, in that Nigerian national anthem, please, for those yes, of so. us that are so, uh, those, the old Nigerian national anthem. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, anybody who come around and say tongue is heavenly language, just just kick him, uh, okay. kick him out of your place because it's not saying no, no, anything, no. <laughs> anything that is anything that is what the word. <laughs> me, I me, I used to laugh seriously at them. Yeah. <laughs> You say karabashi kaka kaka ka, all those nonsense. They are just wasting time. They just, I mean, uh, so sorry. Uh, uh, can I just? Uh, uh, I Brazilian, think... the other one we talk our mother tongue. All right. Um, I think you are trying to <coughs> when you are trying to use uh, Isaiah fifty three. I think. The one that was talking about uh, the barren woman, that should be Isaiah 54, chapter 1. That uh, verse 27, Galatians uh, 4, 27, which was talking about the barren woman that has many women. That's uh, Isaiah, it's quoting, Hello. it was quoting Isaiah 54, verse 1, I guess. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's where it was quoting, really. So but also this one. I just want us to put that one in perspective so that uh, when the material gets out, people don't look at it. Uh, Otherwise, hello, hello. Okay, am I audible? Okay, briefly, <laughs> briefly here. Yes, oh, okay. yes, you are audible. Everybody is audible. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say I don't know if the uh, other no. session is here or maybe everyone is. <laughs> well. Uh, Regarding tongues, I think um, the best way uh, we can um, think of it, or the Please best come again. biblical way to look at. Hello. Go on. We are on. Okay. Okay. So regarding tongues, um, it's if you look at the old episodes and um, no. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, from the Old Testament and then to the Epistles, and you study the issue of tongues well, you see that you know after we have the Scripture, um, or after the Apostolic times, uh, tongues are, have ceased, like the gift of tongues, you no, know, where the Apostles and the Church then will be able to you know speak um, languages they've not had before or they don't know before. That gift have ceased, and why is because. Um, Paul tells us the reason for that gift in 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 First Corinthians fourteen that it was a sign to mm. as a judgment sign to Israel to the nation of Israel. I don't know why a lot of charismatic and Pentecostal church miss they don't you know look at that verse where Paul says this tongue th this gift is a sign to unbelieving Israel. And when did when was the period of you know, unbelieving Israel? That was in the first century uh, A.D. Right. So anyone that is anybody speaking using the gift of tongues today you know that that is not from the holy spirit because that gift are the purpose in first century AD. the second um, reason for the um, sign gift of tongues then was because you know to authenticate um the church then and the apostles right to build the foundation of the church and that is basically the reason for sign, most of the sign gifts we have uh, in the apostolic times so when giant. you understand so when you understand that you know tongues were given as a sign and that you know, oh, no, they were okay. giving uh, as judgment on the nation of Israel. You understand the purpose of tongues, yeah. right? You you understand the purpose. Yeah. Then um, um, Paul says that once you interpret tongues, right, it becomes on the same level as prophecy. So once tongues is interpreted to the normal language, it becomes on the same level as prophecy, right? And we note. I hope you have not muted him. Okay, please, he, he can, he can um, unmute himself. You muted, you muted him. You did, you muted him. Oh, yeah, okay, got... sorry, sorry, Moses, got... Moses, please unmute yourself. Oh, I was, okay, yeah, yeah. I was muted. I, sorry. I, I didn't know. Where did I stop? Okay, sorry, sorry. No. <laughs> Where did I stop? Uh, just about a minute, just about a minute ago or so. Oh, okay. So let me just summarize what I was saying. What I was saying was that, okay. um, biblically, 
the gift of tongues have ceased in our age now. That um, gifts they had then. And why it is because Paul tells us the reason for that gift, which is as a sign to unbelieving Israel in 1 Corinthians 14, 22. A lot of Pentecostal and charismatic churches ignore that verse. I don't know why they, they don't even remember that verse when they are you know, giving the argument for tongues. So in verse 22, it says, um, don't you know, um, it says, in, don't you know that tongues are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers? Why prophecy is a sign not for unbelievers, but for believers? Then um, Paul quoted um, Isaiah. You know, Isaiah already professes that God will speak to his people in another language. And now that has been fulfilled already in the apostolic times in the first century AD. After that time, there was no need for tongues again. Why do we need tongues again this age when God has already fulfilled what he needed tongues for in first century AD? So anybody speaking in tongues now or claiming to have the gift of tongues now, it's not from the Holy Spirit, definitely. And then I said the other reason is tongues were a sign, right, to establish the church, to confirm the apostles, right? We don't need that now. Since we already have the word of God, which the apostles has given us, Jude says the faith once and for all delivered to the saints. And the third reason is that tongues were a revelation then in the first century AD, right? They were, they were you know, revelation from God. And now that we know that um, there is no new revelation today after the canon of scriptures has been completed, right, we then know that God cannot be giving anybody gift of tongues to give new revelation. Because if someone is having the gift of tongues today, right, that is giving us new revelation, right? If somebody is saying, oh, he's give, having the supernatural gift of tongues, then that is giving new revelation. We know there's no new revelation. All revelation sees with the close of scripture. We have every, um, the once and for all delivered faith. Peter says um, everything we need for life and godliness is in scripture. So nothing like that again so we know as christians that rightly exegete the word of god we know that sign gifts were for a purpose from moses to elijah to jesus to the apostles they were for a purpose god doesn't just you know do signs for nothing and now that god has completed his word from the from prof, from the lord to the prophets to the gospel he has put all his word in one book one perfect book, Hebrews 1 1 said in diverse time he spoke through the prophets and you know he spoke in several months, but in now he has spoken through his son. Finally, he has spoken, right? Mm. And we have that testimony of his son in scripture. So, nothing, everyone wants to hear this people saying there's one prophecy, new year prophecy, or there's one tongue, people are speaking tongues, or yeah, vision. You know that that is nonsense. We have everything we need in the word of God, right? So, that should even make us already cancel the issue of tongues. So, you don't even need to argue with all these Pentecostals on ah, from why it has you know, you know from first Corinthians 14, blah blah. Just tell them Isaiah prophesied the use of tongues will happen and it has happened, it has been fulfilled. Or are there are, are, are you people seeing um, um is the event of first century the happening now? If they can point to it happening now, then <laughs> probably they have the case, but we know that has fulfilled its purpose. So yes, um the sign gifts, especially the gift of tongues have ceased, right? The only gifts we have now are for the are gifts that edify um uh, uh the church that are not sign gifts. So gift of teaching, you know, teaching the word of God, exhortation and all that. Right, not sign gifts. Right. So so once we understand that, we know that all these people they're just you no know, charlatans and you know. so yeah, that's my contribution. Thank you. Thank you, Moses. Thank you. That's very good. Um do do, do we still have one or two questions? That's about a minute or two. I, I, I know how the voice of faith apart from when we are starting to I'm here. I don't oh, have okay. any question, but I'm here. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank mm. you. Thank you. And um, Caleb, the last week we didn't hear your voice. I I hope I hope you're okay. Oh. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. And Hosea, I Hosea, you are welcome. Okay, Branham D, how are you? Are you not having any questions today? Uh, no, no, no. Good evening. I don't have any questions today. I'm just enjoying the fellowship. And uh, okay. uh, the only okay. thing the only thing that just struck me is um when the brother said that uh, even praying in English is, uh, if I'm praying in English, I'm speaking in tongues. The thing sort of shook me like, hey, 
this is that this, this is this is unbelievable. <laughs> that this is unbelievable. Why haven't I thought of this before? <laughs> I'm I'm Igbo. I'm Igbo, so I can if I speak, if I pray in 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 my that in Igbo. That means I'm praying in tongues. So you are sure, goodness you are. gracious. <laughs> goodness gracious. So, so uh, while you were still while you were speaking, um uh, while brother uh, I think Moses I can't remember, was speaking, I was like, hey, I, I think I need to just go go into my room now, lock the door, and just just pray with Igbo. It's, it's still the same. <laughs> it's the same thing with my dear brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we just we just don't realize things. We just don't realize things until you know you're in a fellowship and things just you just hear things. You're in the spirit and you just hear something and it just strikes you. You know, it strikes you. At, oh, why haven't I thought of this before? <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, the same way, the same way when people say a uh, destiny changer, when they say that. <laughs> You will resonate with it. But go and look at the ordinary definition of destiny. Can it change? Mm. Can destiny change? <laughs> that is... Uh, go and look at all the destiny helper. You see, all those nonsense. All those nonsense. Both, both words. <laughs> nah, both you, will, words. you will resonate with it. New Apostolic uh, Reformation both words. Yeah. Uh, uh, born again Christian. What is the meaning of that? Born again yeah. Christian. <laughs> <laughs> so born all those things. <laughs> born again Christian. <laughs> That's another word. That's That's another word. <laughs> <laughs> With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Are they a Christian that are not born again? <laughs> <laughs> that that, that yeah. with the evidence of with the evidence of speaking tongues. <laughs> I remember when I was. When I was in university, then Christ Embassy used to come to my home, my hostel, to come and evangelize. So one of these Christ Embassy brothers came to me. Then I wasn't again. I wasn't born again. I, then so he would come to me and say, Moses, I um, need to be born again. I need to have the evidence mm-hmm. of speaking in tongues. Mm-hmm. Ah, then you will not be praying with me. Can you speak now? I said I can't speak. He didn't leave my room, so I just <laughs> had to fake the tongue. <laughs> I just fake something. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, these people they don't they don't understand the Bible at all. They don't yeah, say yeah. at all, right? Yeah. Uh, they are not interested. Incredible. They are not. Incredible. Anyway, that's yeah. good. Thank you so much, sir. And also, um, I want to add that. Thank uh, you. Uh, 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 Go ahead, please. Yes, I want to add that. I um keep quiet there, two of you. I'm sorry. Um, I want to add that Afri- oh, African mother. African mother. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Those boys are speaking in tongues. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> so um, I want to add that um, the worship, the worship is not just um. Prayers, it's not just singing, it is also we studying the word of God. It is also we making decisions that goes according to the word of God. When we want to take decisions, it has to be according to the word of God. That is our worship. When we read the scriptures and meditate in it, that is our worship. When we glorify him, when we talk about him, when we when we think about him, in fact, when we when we when we see when I don't know how to put it, when we see the love, is love. And we respond to him according to his word in Christ. It's our worship. It's not just um, the music, even though I can't even get any music now. I long to get a Christian music in my room and say, yes, I am worshiping God. I don't have one. I don't have one. Look at what you both hymns. They are better hey. than the others. Uh, I don't know. Chorus. Those hymns, those hymns have tried that kind of boring. They're like, oh. So <laughs> I think that was old school, old school no. for Edam. Yeah, you know, yeah. for Edam. No I, no. I love him, though. I love him. No, no so, so, you, should, you, should, 
But yeah, you should look at the aims because those Step. most of yeah. most of them speak the word of God. You are not looking at to that dance into those things. So look at the aims. I'm not, you know, yes. uh, not all my miracles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all those ones you <laughs> can't get anything. <laughs> Oh, I'm not taking yeah. all those ones. You're very right. Yeah, hymns <laughs> are theologically, theologically sound. Those hymns yes. mm-hmm. are very yeah. theologically sound. Yes, yes. That's, yes. They are inspirational. They were, they were actually inspired. If you want me to say it yeah. in a manner of saying, mm-hmm. they are like, uh, uh, give me this one, give me visa, give me that, give me those things, all those ones. <laughs> But where I mean, can we find I'm, them now these I, days I, I, too? I run, run away from elevation uh, music. Uh, run by. Yeah. Have, uh, no. Ah, please uh, run away from elevation music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, run away from elevation music. Uh, run away from Bethel. Yes, so you saw. Run away from Bill You're going far. Let's run come away back from home. Them. Let's come back home <laughs> to Ada and um, what's that uh, Christ Embassy yes, lady? Yes. Um Shinaj. Let's come back to them, you know. Let's come back to them. Every, the, um, yeah. that's, I said no, we are going far to Bethel to elevation song. That's far. Even here in Nigeria, okay. our worship system, what are they offering to us? Prosperity worship. You, just, you, prosperity. you just said what worship is. Worship is not just those songs. Yes, you, you, sir. Just, you just told us what worship is. Worship yes, is sir. The head. So uh, don't equate it with uh, people who want to mesmerize you. That is with, true, sir. With, uh, say, don't, uh, say, uh, that's that's why I said if you find Sanki, if you will have some sort of praise, go and look yeah. at them. The music in uh, the songs that are in them, okay. say, because. It is the lyrics you really want, not the sound that they, mm. uh, they accompaniment. Yes. It is the lyrics you need to really understand. But if you go with all those ones, ah, my dear sister, you, you, you. We, need, we, we, the new, younger ones, we still need some sound that are biblical too. I wish we could have it. I wish we could have it too, because yeah. I love sounds like that. I <laughs> wish. But since I don't have them, I'm content with every other part, every um, hymns that I can come along with, you know. So yes, that is what I have, I have to add. You. I will send you. Please some, send um, me people theologically sound um, um, uh, artists that you know, exalt. Thank Christ. you. Oh, I like, can not even yeah. just in, thank you. Okay, yeah. please. How would I get them? How would I get in maybe, touch? How would I? Maybe I'll just message you on Skype. I'll, I'll post it on the group. For, okay. You no. Know, yeah. Okay. On, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, po- yeah. Post it on the group. I'm interested as well, Moses. That's good. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> That's good. And um, That's good. also, I want to add that we should know that the focus is um heaven. The focus yeah. is not in uh, our uh, heads. Uh, the focus is for us to get there in Christ. My dear yeah, sister, yes, my dear sister, be very yes, careful. Sir. Be very careful for what, what you just said. Do you think if you go to the garage, do you live in Lagos? No, sir. I'm in Delta yes, currently, sir. sir. Eh? I'm in Delta Where State you? currently. Okay. If you go to the garage in Asaba or wherever you are, and you ask somebody who is drinking or go, go, do you want to go to heaven? What do you think the answer will be? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> so when you just said the focus is heaven, every one of them focuses on heaven. You, you, you. I don't know whether it was you or somebody. You said when you hear the word of God and you respond to it, it's your response to the word of God to what Christ said. That is the that makes you the Christian. The rest, uh, the rest is is, is in His hand. Okay, you say you just go anywhere. You say oh. You want to go to heaven? Everybody will tell you. Even if you ask anybody, why are you a Christian? And they say, wants to go to heaven. Watch out. You may not even be a Christian. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I've, I've not heard my sister's voice. Um, the, I think she's in South Africa. I love her. When she oh, talks, I'm she has not said anything today. <laughs> I have missed your voice so I'm much. Here. I'm just enjoying the conversation. I'm here. I'm listening. How are you doing? 
I'm mm-hmm. doing fine. And you, how are you? I'm fine. <laughs> well, thank God. <laughs> okay. Um, um, thank you. Th- Elder, thank you, um, everybody. Okay. Yeah, go, go on, go on, please. No, yeah, I wanted to ask that. Are you are you going to do any um um expose on Ulukoya soon? You've not done anyone, and I, there are a lot of people. I want you to do one so I can share to other people in MFM. Okay, okay, I, I will give I will give a look at a look. Um, it's one of my customers, really. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, well, it's, it's one of the worst people. One of the worst people you've ever seen. One of the worst available. Worst. Yes. 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 yes, yes, one of the worst. One of the worst. <laughs> yes, one of okay, the sir. Worst. Please do one so I can share to my uh, fellow, ah, okay. my because okay. MFM was my previous church, so I can share. Oh, okay, okay. 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 Uh, I will be in Nigeria God, God by tomorrow. Mm. Oh, okay, I'll okay, be... that'll be good. Uh, but I will still be using my um, WhatsApp number, so uh, okay. I, I think we'll have a chat, but I will be, I will, I will be generally be within uh, Ibadan and Lagos. Okay, I wish I wish you come to Abuja. Yeah. Yes, I'm, not... Call. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, no yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Uh, so I think it's Moses that is going to pray for us this evening as we close. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Heavenly Father, okay. we thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another wonderful time in your presence. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to look into your word, to study your word, to be edified by your word, Lord. We don't take this for granted. We thank you for abiding us in the truth, Lord. We pray that as we've listened to your word today, Lord, we pray that you, know, we, you give us the grace to live out your word. Let your word be impactful in our lives. Um, like James says, don't let us be the man who looks at himself in the mirror and forgets about himself, Lord. Let you know, the word we've looked into, Lord, be, be, be something in our lives. Don't let us just live like we've not had your word today, Lord. And Father, Lord, we pray that um, you, know, you give us the grace to continue and abide in your word, Lord. Give us the grace to continue in the sanctification of your truth, Lord. And Lord, we pray for those that are still in darkness, O oh Lord. We pray that that through the ministry of your word, that they are regenerated, O oh Lord. They are brought back to the light, Lord. We pray for the lost, O oh Lord, that um, you have mercy on them and put them into the truth, the light of the truth, Lord. We pray as we go into our various places and destinations, O oh Lord, keep us safe, deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation, O oh Lord. In Jesus' Amen. mercy, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Uh, the recording. Of-